Hello and welcome to part B of lab activity 11. We left off in part A of lab activity 11 here. We have a scatter plot. It's kind of ugly. It's utilitarian. It tells us as the researcher that there looks like there's a relationship. We need to make it look better for the reader to understand what we see. Remember, the reader doesn't have our background with the data. So we need to ensure that the reader understands the story that the data is telling us. So this is where we are now. By the end of this lab activity, we're going to end up here. Notice red states are colored red, blue states are colored blue. We got commas along here. That's kind of nice. We changed it from mean income in just dollars to US dollars to make it very explicit. Uh, all of our labels, or I'm sorry, all of our values are horizontally uh, oriented. So this looks much better than what we ended up with at the, at the end of A, which was just this. So let's see how we can get from here to there. Notice again also that the margins are much smaller. And so to begin, let's go ahead and start R. Begin a new script. So the first thing we're going to do is load the script from last time. Um, so we're going to source it, and we saved it if we uh, followed the directions. Scatter plots 11a.r. We're going to run that, and there's the graphic that we ended up with last time. Okay, so that means that the data is already loaded. If we don't believe, a, believe that, we can do a summary of the data set and that brings it back up. And so since we are looking at making the graphics look better, the first step is going to be to set the parameters. Remember region 1 is setting the parameters, the definitions of the graphics, the, the boundaries, the, the, the overall theme of it, and it consists just of repeated par functions. So the first thing we're going to do is turn all of our values horizontal. That's last equals one. Second thing we're going to do is go from a sans serif font to a, a serif font. Third thing we're going to do is fix the margins. Um, let's have four lines on the bottom, four lines on the left, nothing on the top, nothing on the right. But let's go ahead and add a little margin to all, all four sides. So what this line does is it sets the margin at the bottom to 4.1, which is 4 plus that 0.1. The margin on the left on the y-axis side to 4.1. Margin on the top to 0.1, 0 plus 0.1. And the margin on the right to also 0.1. Um, the ordering here is south, west, north, east, or x, y, top, y2. I know we can call that on the right. So now let's go ahead and copy the graphic from before. If we were, and this is what we had. Remember it was y tilde x or dependent variable tilde independent variable. We set PCH equal to 16 because 16 uh, is that solid dot. X label was mean income in dollars and again units go in brackets. Y labels weekly church attendance. We ran our X limits from 30,000 to 75,000, and our Y limit from 0 to 1. So if we copy all f of those lines and hit R, got a few things that have already ch shifted or changed. One, we're now running from 0 to 1. We got a lot more space in the top. Everything is in a serif font. And then all the dots are black, but that's default. So the first thing we're going to do to make this a little bit nicer to look at is to fix this horizontal, these horizontal values, these uh, x-axis values. Instead of 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, it would be 3, 0, comma, 0, 0, 0. Now there are several ways of doing, adding that uh, comma at the thousands place. This is just one of them. So the first thing you've got to do is turn off all of those 
all of those numbers. R right now is automatically putting these here. So the first thing we have to do is tell R not to. And then we'll go back and re-add them. To tell R not to add those axes, see the x-axis, axis type, and for not. x, a, x, t equals quote, and. Now notice nothing along the bottom. While we're here, let's go ahead and, yeah, we won't. So now we have to add them back. The function to add back to the axis is the axis function, a, x, i, s. It takes three, sometimes you can get away with just two, but it takes three parameters. The first parameter is which sides you're wanting to add the axis, axis to. Since we're adding it to the bottom, to the x-axis, uh, it's side one. The second thing we have to tell it is um, where we want to add the labels. And that's the at. And we want to add them at 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70,000. So that's what that is. That's one way of doing it. We could actually do it a little bit easier. And the third thing we have to tell it is, OK, what labels are we actually putting at those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places? And at 30,000, what are we going to put? 30, 1, 2, 3. At 40,000, at 50,000, at 60,000, and at 70,000. So what this will do is along the x-axis, and it's along the x-axis because side equals 1, at spot that corresponds to 30,000 in the x-axis, they're going to do 30, 0, 0, 0, 0. At the spot corresponding to 40,000 along the x-axis, it's going to type 40, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. So putting these all together, this is what we get. Notice those commas are now where they belong. Now, this is just one way of doing it. There are other ways of doing it, and there are other ways of doing parts of these much shorter. For instance, the at equals, well, this is pretty regular. I mean, you're going from 30,000 to 70,000 in steps of 10,000. So in other words, we could do it as a sequence from 30,000 to 70,000 in steps of 10,000. That will be equivalent to what we just did, a little bit less typing. Or if you really want to get less typing, this is going to be equal to 3 to 7 times 10,000. The 3 colon 7 gives us 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then each of those is multiplied by 10,000. So this entire expression is 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, each of those times 10,000. That's another way of doing it. But notice that the shorter you make it, the more compact, the less typing you do, the harder it is to actually read what you're doing. So in all reality, even though all of those are equivalent, I do tend to keep it at the original. Because I don't have to think. When I see this at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, there's no calculation that goes on in my head. There's no interpretation of the SEQ or the sequence function. It's just those are the values. All right. So that's what we got. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 on the bottom with commas in the right places. We're almost there. It's supposed to look like this. Um, we'll change the mean income to US dollars in brackets. That's pretty easy. Boom, US. Getting there. So mean income works, weekly church attendance, 0 to 1. OK, it looks like now we have to tackle the dots. Before we get to this type of dot coloration, let's color the dots individually. In fact, let's go ahead and color the Oklahoma dot orange and the Oregon dot green. 
So here's where we are now. And well, how would we do it if we were doing this by hand? Well, I would have to locate Oklahoma, which one of these dots corresponds to Oklahoma, and then also which one corresponds to Oregon. Now there's several ways that I can do that. Go ahead and close that. One is I can just run RELIG, the name of the data set, hit enter, and then look for the values for Oklahoma. So the religion or the attendance is 0.49. The income is 41,664. Oregon it's 0.31. And the income average is 48,457. And then I'll just color those two points with the points command. And for Oklahoma, the points command will be 49, 0 point. I'm sorry. The x value for Oklahoma is 41664. The y value is 0 0.49. Uh, PCH equals 16, so we get that solid dot. And we want to color it orange. COL equals orange. Similarly for Oregon, we can just do the points command. Oregon it's 48457 and 0.31. Again, PCH equals 16 to make it a solid dot. And color equals green. Now I'm going to run both of those, and I get an error. Why do I have an error? exactly because what it says. New plot has not yet been called. Remember, these are annotations, which means that the actual plot has to already have been called. And I closed it last time. So the fix, just run them all. There's Oklahoma. There's Oregon. Oklahoma's orange. Oregon's green. That's one way of doing it. It's not the most effective, really, or efficient. Um, if you have a lot of states you're going to color, um, if you only have the two states, Oregon and Oklahoma, perfectly all right to do it this way. Another way that we can do it, um, which is more flexible and, and keeps me from making mistakes with typing, is I can define two variables. I'm going to define the variable OK corresponding to Oklahoma. RELIG remembers the data set. And it's going to be the row corresponding to um, the row that contains a state equal to Oklahoma. That is a comma. And then OR for Oregon, it's going to be the same, the data set. What these will do is it will take everything in the data set where the state is the same as Oklahoma. I'll give you that entire row, because you left the thing after the dot empty, and store it into the OK variable. So run that. Let's go ahead and look at what's in OK. 37, that's the state number. Oklahoma, ST is OK. Attendance is 0 .49. Income 41,664. Vote red. Census 4 is so. Similarly for Oregon. 38, Oregon, OR, 0.31, 48,457, blue, we, we for west. And now I can just do the points. So I can do points of OK. Let's see what goes there. It's the X value, and the X value is income. Quote, income. Followed by, what's the Y value? Uh, attendance. Notice income and attendance are both in quotation marks. PCH equals 16. Color is orange. Copy and paste. That was faster. And instead of orange, we'll make it green. Now we'll run those two lines. And we get the same error because we already closed. Boom, boom. There we go. Same results. Oklahoma's colored orange. Oregon's colored green. 
both the first of looking at the data and the second of creating variables for the states and then plotting from those variables will give you the same results. In some ways it's just a matter of taste. But it is very good to realize that you can look at the data and figure out what to plot and where to plot based on that. So here's what we got now. Or uh, Oklahoma and Oregon are colored. If we wanted to, we could color Montana. What color should we make Montana? Let's make it violet red. So what would we do? Copy the V MT for Montana. Boom. We define this the variable MT. And that's it. Notice it was faster than looking at the data set, figuring out the values, typing it all out. It was faster because we were able to copy and paste. And now we've turned Montana a violet red 3. So even though it looks like you're doing a lot more typing, if you have to color more than one state this way, it's actually much faster if you define those states. It is, trust me on that one. So finally, let's go ahead and instead of coloring them state by state by state, I'm going to delete all those. We're going to color the states blue, where they voted for Barack Obama in 2012, and red, where they voted for Mitt Romney in 2012. How do we do that? We can do it fast or slow. And as always, fast requires some tricks, and it's not always obvious why those tricks work. So let's do it slow. We're going to have two points commands. The x value is income. We're going to color these red, or I mean these blue. What? How do we know whether to color the state blue or red? Well, it's going to be how they voted. If they voted blue, we're going to pay attention to them here. So this will be the x variable for all the blue states, the y variable for all the blue states, pch equals 16 to make it solid color dot, and then what color? col equals blue. Similarly, the red states, run those two, and what do we get? Blue states and red states. It's really as easy as that. Or it's a little bit easier, but that easier requires some tricks. And I'm going to avoid the tricks, because this is pretty obvious what we're doing here. X, Y. For the first row, we're only ca caring about the blue states, and we're coloring them all blue. In the second, we care about the red states only, and we're coloring all of them red. It's kind of nice. So that leaves us not quite, sorry, not quite where we wanted to be. Notice that the mean income and the weekly church attendance, the two labels, are larger than the values and they're also bold. So let's take care of that right now. That happens in the pars. Um, remember the character expansion that we talked about in part A? It was CEX. Here we're going to specify it's going to be character expansion but just for the labels. Let's go, so CEX.LAB is going to make that 1.2 which means we're going to make those labels 20 percent bigger than they currently are. Let's see how that looks. Made them bigger. Second thing is we made them bold-faced. How do we do that? Also in the par, 
its font dot lab is equal to two. Uh, font equal to one is just regular font. Two is bold. Three is italics. Four is bold italics. And we run those bigger and bolder, bigger and bolder. So we're almost there, almost. Now we got to figure out. Nope, those colors. That's pink and that's uh, Dodger blue actually. So instead of coloring them blue, we'll call them color them. Dodger blue. Instead of coloring red, we'll color it pink. Well, that's not quite it either. Because if we notice, we've got little black circles around these. And here, there's no little black circles. Hmm. How do we do that? Maybe it's a different plotting character. Instead of 16, it could be something larger than 16. How would we find out? Google PCH values in R. That takes us someplace that we can look, see if we can get there. It's a good way to go. So here's what we did for this entire lab activity. It's really everything we did here. We took it from where we were and where we were is this. Sans serif font got vertical aligned values on the left and black and where we ended up is dots are colored according to how they voted larger labels all by themselves, bolded labels, got commas here along the x-axis, horizontal values all throughout. We've actually come a long ways. In laboratory activity 12, you're going to see how to put a regression line here. And a regression line is just a line that uh, summarizes the relationship between these two numeric variables. But that's for lab activity 12. We're at the end of lab activity 11. So hopefully this was very helpful. I didn't give you the extra credit, but you're just two steps away. You got to figure out what PCH to do use, and then you got to figure out one other change to make on these points commands. Once you do that, make sure you send me your graphic and your script so I can give you that extra credit. Remember, it's just limited to the first one who gets it. Take care of yourself. I'll see you in class.